Yeah, man, the pandemic did me good. I, I can't tell you, can't lie. It ain't knocking your hustle. What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Quiz the Barber, and you tuned in with Head Campus TV for another episode of Student of the Game. I got my boy Camo with me. Yo, yo. And we're going to get into this interview real quick. Camo, what's up with you, bro? Sit up, man. Just maintain. Already good to hear, man. We always got to maintain to keep our head up out here. Most do. Man, I appreciate you doing this interview with me, bro. Oh, no, no. Uh, inquiring minds may want to know people who want to get into the barbering industry. Uh, want to see things from the eyes of a student, bro. Uh, what brought you here to, uh, you know, blade craft and made you want to become a barber? Oh uh, man, I was already cutting, uh, just looking for a hustle after my football career, man. Just seeing how much income you can make from being your own boss and just, you know what I'm saying, vibing with people. And that just kind of interested me to start cutting, man. And, you know what I'm saying, uh, venture off into cutting all types of textures of hair. Things like that, and just learning stuff that I didn't already know. For sure, you grew up here in Dallas. Uh, yeah, I did. But uh, I was born in New Orleans. Uh, I moved out here like a year before Katrina, and I just been, you know what I'm saying? Dallas down after that. So growing up in New Orleans, you know, I know there's a lot of high ball fades out that way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then when you get here to Dallas, they do do ball fades, but they rock shades, different things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh. Can you educate the people a little bit about the trends being that you've been in both places? Oh, uh, yeah, so down here in Dallas, man, it's like they got a lot of signature hairstyles down here, like a uh, duck tail, shag. So, man, in New Orleans, it's kind of like a, uh, I mean, they don't have like a signature fade, but it's a lot of, it's a lot of ball fades, like you say, drop fades, uh, designs, the, Things like that, man. But I hear it. I've never seen nothing like this. I hear it, man. I, 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 <laughs> they get wild with yeah, it. Man. Hey, but it be fresh at the same time, too, though. So that ain't to take nothing away from the D. Yeah, they, they, they get fresh with it, for sure. Yeah, not for real, though. They <laughs> so since you've been here, man, like, what's been some of the most challenging things you've been through on from, you know, the technical side uh, of it? Because I know you was already doing it before you got here, but then when you have to learn it, a specific way or the way that the school present a system was been difficult or challenging for you? Oh, uh, for the most part, the challenge, the most challenging thing I went through was uh, maybe the scissor cutting. Okay. And uh, putting that shear work down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, that wasn't even that that much of a challenge. Is that's just getting the concept of it and getting how you want the cut to look out. Once you know how you want the cut to look, then you can kind of use the tools a little better. For sure. Uh, yeah, man, I just got, I got better with my game once I learned that, like, point cutting, using the thinning shears, things like that that made my game a little better, made me a little bit more observant, too. Gotcha. So, have your expectations been met as a student, um, or do you feel like before you graduate and get up out of here, some other things you want to hone in on and, and, and get a little better at? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I want to get better at designs, man. That's uh, really my number one focus right now. Gotcha. Designs and uh, shades. You man. already draw a little bit or yeah. whatever? Okay. I do a little drawing. It's just uh, when I get bored, man, when I visualize in my head, I just kind of like try to draw it out with a pencil, get my face right. Because, like I said, uh, once you know how you want your cut to look, it's, it's a little bit easier to execute, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what you want to do with the cut. For sure. So being a, a barber student during this pandemic time, man, how has that been for you? Oh, I, I loved it. Uh, when the pandemic first started, I was doing house calls because uh, they shut all the barbershops down. That's really what got me a little bit more uh, towards coming to barber school because I started getting a lot of clientele. And I'm like, man, I might as well go ahead and get my license. And, uh, yeah, man, the pandemic did me good. I can't, <laughs> can't lie. Like, it, it ain't knock your hustle at all. Yeah, nah, so, so you definitely feel like it's going to be here to stay? Uh, I hope not, but... Well, I mean, in terms of the industry, let me rephrase that. You think the barbering industry is going to be here to stay? Oh, yeah, most definitely. It's growing, if anything. Like, everybody trying to be a barber now, man. So, speaking of everybody trying to be a barber, do you feel like the game is too saturated right now? Uh, it can be, I feel like in certain areas like Dallas, California, like 
places that that are really like uh, high maintenance and like really go off entertainment. Right. Yeah, it's it's real saturated. So you definitely got to do some things to stand out and make yourself set apart from the other okay. bar. If you in if you in any hot spots in the United States, you gonna have to be like your party gonna have to be there for you to be that guy. Like it, cause it's a lot of talented people in, in Dallas. I, I know so many talented barbers, seen so many talented barbers, and uh, that's just motivation for me, man. Cause it showed me what what pinnacles I can reach. You know what I'm saying? I can surpass. So. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So I mean, in the future, do you have any? expectations where you want to be as far as platform barber shop on or anything like that where you see yourself trying to go in the future with this oh uh, well really i want to get my own studio okay uh, once i leave out of barber school i want to work in the shop just to kind of get that environment get some uh you know pick up some swag this that from other barbers or uh, let them pick up stuff from me just kind of network right. and then once i get my own clientele and my own group together i want to have my own shop and I just want to cut out this shop and maybe have me a chain of salons um, so, before I'm 30 though. So in terms of swag, man, um, that can go both ways from your style of cutting to just how you are as a barber that make mm -hmm. you flashy and make people, you know, want to deal with you on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. I see you rocking the dreads, but just in general, what does a haircut mean to you? And, you know, from a, from a barber standpoint and it's just from a, from a consumer standpoint, what what it, what does the haircut embody to you? Oh uh, man, a haircut can change all uh, types of things. So a haircut could be uh, the difference between a person getting a job, or the difference between a man proposing and his girl saying yes and saying no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like a haircut can do wonders, man. It can go a long way. Uh, just making somebody feel good they can create a, a good networking uh, bond between you and another person you know what i'm saying so it can go longer than just a haircut once you get that person in their chair it's all about you and, and your product so i think a haircut is very